You know, I, I talk to a lot of women who are frustrated or who are seeking clarity as to why they're not finding success when it comes to dating and relationships. And in many of these cases, if not almost all of them, many of them, not all of them, but, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll present this, the situation in a way that says, yo, I'm doing all the right things. Or, you know, Stefan, I've watched your videos and I'm, I'm healed and I've, I've done the inner work and I've made these changes, all these things, but nothing's going right. And I don't want to ever dismiss the efforts that someone is, is putting in to make things better and to get better results. But what I find is that when we dig deeper, there are certain things they continue to overlook. There are certain habits that women engage in for various reasons that she may not understand is causing more of a problem than she thinks it is. It's actually pushing men away and sabotaging potential relationships. Now, again, various reasons could be she's getting bad advice from the wrong people or just bad advice in general. Um, she is still holding on to a deeper fear. So the healing process isn't complete. And let me say, some people think, well, you're never fully healed. I disagree. I think you can fully heal. I think we will never have a life that new things won't come about that may possibly hurt us. But once you've truly healed from your past, things don't hurt you the same like it used to. You're not triggered the same. It's a, it's a very different experience going forward, but there will still be things that come against you, you know? But you can come to a place of full healing. But we'll leave that for a different video. The point is there's something there. And so I want to highlight some of the, the common habits that a woman may overlook that's actually working more against her rather than for her. And so the first unattractive habit that men get turned off by is women playing hard to get. Now, if, if you have watched my other videos, then you know, you've heard how I feel about this. But of course, let me break it all down for you. Um, I know a lot of people tell women, hey, you're the prize. He needs to chase you. Um, don't do too much or flat out, you need to play hard to get all these different things. And I understand why they're telling you this, but they're not explaining how this is actually causing more problems. The reality is that playing hard to get may work with the wrong guy. Now, when I say wrong guy, I don't necessarily mean a guy who's trying to be abusive, manipulate you or anything like that. He could be a genuinely good guy and still be the wrong guy. And it will work in that situation. And let's just use the example of good guy, just the wrong guy for you, not the right fit. So you playing hard to get, yes, he may become so infatuated with you that your resistance and you making him jump through extra hoops isn't going to deter him because he is fixated on that infatuation. He is obsessed with just getting you, right? But that's not real love. That's not true love. So what you're actually going to end up with isn't going to be something that you're going to be happy with. And, and trust, you. I've talked to plenty of women who did that, played the hard to get, got the man, even got married, and then they saw the tables were turned on them. As one example of what goes wrong, meaning he, he chases, chases, chases to get you, finally gets you, finally marries you. And in his mind, it's like, okay, well, it's my turn now. It's my turn to reap the benefits. It, it's my turn for, to, to see a return on this investment that I've made. I've, I've put in all this effort, all this extra effort. I need some reciprocity now. That, and he may have ignored that for a long time. It was really, it got lopsided. And so that's another issue that happens is where as a woman, you may become so comfortable in the fact that he's the one overly, let's just use the word chasing. He's the one chasing you and that feels comfortable and it feels good and it may even feel safe, right? But it's covering the fact that you're not really into him like that. And you're only moving forward with him because your mindset is, well, he loves me more than I love him, so this must be a good, safe situation. And I have a video on that and why that's a horrible approach, all right? 
but it's masking the fact that you're not really into him like that. So again, the right foundation is not being set. So aside from what you're setting yourself up for, playing hard to get is a deterrent to a man who actually likes you. And when I say actually likes you, because again, the good guy may like you, but it's, it's built more on infatuation. With a guy who likes you in the sense of there's something deeper going on here. There's connection here. There, there, you know, he may even feel like after a few weeks of you guys talking, he's falling for you. You playing hard to get will only start to put, it can potentially scare him. It can potentially make him think, well, maybe she's not that interested in me. It could hurt him because when someone is pursuing someone that they love, they are much more vulnerable. And to see you show so much resistance can create a feeling of rejection. And that then makes him pull back. And so now you're thinking, oh, he's pulling back because he's not serious. But no, he's pulling back because you've been holding back so much. And it's made him think that you're not really into him. All right. So there's a lot that can go wrong with the playing hard to get. It, you you don't really get to see what you're signing up for if you don't put yourself out there correctly. Now, when I say put yourself out there correctly, what I mean is that in playing hard to get for a lot of women, what they're essentially doing is not being their true self. OK, and in not being your true self, you cannot see if you truly align with this man. So I'll give you one example. Let's say in this playing hard to get you don't really reach out and call him that much because you don't want to seem thirsty or whatever the case, desperate, all these things. But the reality is that you're someone that loves constant communication. You in a relationship would naturally reach out every single day. So let's just say things move forward with you not reaching out much. All right. So one, he doesn't know what kind of woman you really are when it comes to communication. Two, let's just say he actually likes this limited effort in communication you have because maybe it alleviates him of a certain kind of pressure for the guy who's not really serious about you. He feels like, oh, okay, this is easy. Like she doesn't call me. I can hit her up when I want to, even though some of you may say, well, I would still be expecting him to hit me up every day, but I've seen these things happen. Either way, you guys move forward, and then once you guys get in a relationship, your true self comes up. Now you're hitting them up all the time. Now you want constant communication. And to him, it's like, I didn't sign up for this. This is not what I wanted. And so now we start to see cracks in the relationship. We start to see things go downhill. But they're going downhill because now that we've revealed our true selves, we're seeing we're not actually in alignment with each other. We don't actually fit. So when you're playing hard to get, you got to ask yourself, am I really being me right now? Because if I'm not, that's a problem. I'd rather you, you, rather you be your true self and that way you can see what you're really dealing with here. All right, so that brings me to the second unattractive habit that men get turned off by, and that's being very entitled and acting like a spoiled brat. <laughs> so I'm going to hope that most of you are not acting like spoiled brats, right? But let's focus on the entitlement part, and I'll touch a little bit on the spoiled brat part. So with being entitled, let's start with the whole, I'm a prize, I'm the prize. So if you haven't heard it from me before, let me make clear. I don't like the, the idea of women or men telling themselves, I am the prize. We're the prize. No, you're both prizes. You're both blessings in, to the right person in the right relationship. When we get fixated on, I am the prize, then we tend to become more entitled. We tend to become more selfish. We tend to devalue and dismiss the blessing we do have in front of us with this person that we connect with. It can set the stage for a very negative mindset and or unhealthy mindset in the ways that it will impact the relationship. So I do want you to view yourself as a prize and hold yourself in that high regard and know your value, know your worth. But I don't want you to view it in a way that, you know, again, that belittles the man. 
The same way I would tell men, and I, I tell men the same thing, like, yo, you can't think you're the prize and, and dismiss and devalue her. That's not going to work for a true, loving, and successful relationship. But with that said, that entitlement mindset creeps into a lot of people. And what that entitlement mindset can also create as an offshoot of that is the whole mentality of, well, he's supposed to do that. So now when this man takes you to a nice place, he's supposed to do that. When he opens your door, he's supposed to do that. And the he's supposed to do that mentality causes you to not show appreciation for what he's actually doing. And so again, this goes both ways, but I'm speaking to you as women right now. What you have to realize is that when someone does something for you, they are making a choice to do that. No one has to do anything, all right? They are choosing to do it. And when we view it as a choice they're making, we're able to appreciate it more. We understand that for them to be consistent in these efforts, they are choosing to show up the right way over and over and over again. And that should be celebrated and appreciated. Again, it goes both ways. I'm making sure I keep repeating that just for anyone who, you know, oh, well, the men got to do it too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But again, let's focus on you. And that's the last time I'm going to say that. So, it, you got to remember to show that appreciation. So being entitled in that way can cause a lot of problems. I think another example of how entitlement may creep in is that sometimes, let's say as a woman, you're used to a certain kind of treatment, okay? And, and I'm not talking about being respectful treatment. Let's go with a certain kind of lifestyle, that man providing in certain ways, doing certain things. Let's say the last few guys you dated, you know, would randomly give you gifts, all the type of thing. And that's what you're accustomed to. Nothing wrong with that. But then it's very easy to get, become very entitled to where now the minute you see that the man, a new man does not do these things, you, you, you get turned off or you become negative or, you know, you, you, this nasty attitude comes out of you because it's like, how dare he not give me what all these men have given me, which hear me out. There's nothing wrong with you bringing this to his attention. There's nothing wrong with if that's what you require and you find as important to have in a relationship, whatever those things are, that you let that man know. I just don't want you to become entitled to the point where just because he didn't do it, you immediately take it in a negative way. Instead, discuss it because he, that specific man, may just not understand this is what you're looking for. All right. And so if you don't, if you don't understand that there, in dating, there is a learning process and to learn each other, we have to communicate with each other. And we have to have a little bit of grace. I, of course, there's certain things that I think we can discuss and argue that, you know, there's nothing to give grace about when, it, when these specific things happen. And we can make a whole list. Maybe I'll make a whole video about that. But I do think a lot of things that I've seen happening in, in the course of dating, there could be grace in the sense of, okay, the first time I view it as the first time someone does or doesn't do something, maybe they didn't know. Now I'm going to let you know. If you repeat the behavior now, okay, we're done. Like there's nothing else to discuss because I already corrected. I already told you, you are aware now. Now you're choosing not to do it. Okay. But the first time, maybe they just weren't aware. And so again, I've seen situations where the man did not do certain things, take certain actions. And that entitled mindset came out of that woman and it sabotaged what could have been a potentially good relationship. So just be mindful of that. Be aware of that. And so just to touch on the spoiled brat, listen, uh, the, the, the majority of men do not want to deal with a spoiled brat, okay? And so I know some of you are very princessy, if, if that's a correct word to use. Um, and again, I don't want you to not view yourself as that princess, as that queen. I, I don't want to take away from that in that sense. I just want you to be aware of how that comes across at times and make sure you're keeping it in check in the sense of, yes, you can hold men to a certain standard. You should, right? But you don't need to turn negative or nasty when that standard isn't met. You communicate, and if it's not corrected, you just move on. All right, so speaking of nasty, 
And don't think that kind of nasty. I'm talking about nasty. I'll just, whatever. Let's move on. So <laughs> number three is not speaking to him in, or speaking to him in a rude or negative manner, harsh manner. Okay. So here's the thing. Let me, this is what I, I feel the need to say it like this. When a man is genuinely interested in you, he is much more sensitive to you, your words, your actions, to everything, okay? And so you have to be mindful of how you're communicating. And more specifically, not just the words you're using, but the energy, the spirit you give off when you speak. Now, this to me is a huge thing or a very common thing women overlook because a lot of women will say to me, I don't think that was harsh. I don't think that was mean. I don't think that was negative, but it was like, nah, yeah, it really was. <laughs> like when you told me the story, I clearly see why he took it that way. I think it's important that we don't look at, we have to learn not to look at our words and our tone and our energy through our own eyes. We need to consider how others are receiving it, all right? And that's how you're going to have a better picture on how you're actually coming across. So it's important, I think, for anyone, and especially for women, to eat, like talk to other people and say, how do I come across? Do you feel like I come across harsh? Now, quick tip. Don't go ask another negative person, <laughs> right? Don't go ask another nasty attitude, harsh, you know, don't care about people's feelings when they speak type of person because they're going to tell you, yo, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with how you speak because they speak the same way, all right? You need to, if you can, speak to someone that you consider a positive speaker. You consider someone who's very mindful of how they, you know, deliver their message and then ask them, how do you think I come across? You know, and if that means giving them examples and try to be genuine in those examples. Now, again, everyone won't be able to have that outlet to use, but it's just if you can do that, because, again, you need to get outside opinion on how you're coming across. Also, when you are on a date, if a man says to you or he calls it out like, damn, why are you so harsh or why are you so negative? I know this might be tough for some people, but rather than initially just get defensive, right? Because what happens a lot of times is the man says it, the woman gets defensive, and now it becomes a battle. And now it does, even it, 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 it goes from negative to much worse. All right. And in that woman's head, it's like, well, I wasn't talking harsh before, but now I am. <laughs> now you're going to get it, right? What would be better? And again, this is why I always say you got to look at dating as an opportunity to learn and grow, all right? So even when we go on dates that may not work out and with people that it's just not going to go any further with, there could be an opportunity to still learn and, and hone our skills and, and get better as an individual and in how we present ourselves. It would be the same thing as if you were applying for a job and you went on a bunch of different interviews, even if you don't, the, some people are so focused on getting the job that they're missing the opportunity to learn within the interview. Okay. So a lot of people are so focused on trying to get to that relationship and finding something to be successful that they miss learning within the process. So you want to be aware while in the process so that you can learn. And with that said, when that man or, you know, that person calls you out on something, and of course, hopefully they're not calling you out in this very negative attacking way, but either way, when they call you out on it, rather than just react and get defensive, your response should be, what made you feel like that was harsh? All right. Let, you know, try to understand where they're coming from. Now, some situations are going to, are going to just be, it's just really that person and they got a personal issue. But if you start hearing it more than once, if it's a reoccurring theme, then you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, OK, maybe I am a little harder than I thought I was. All right. Let me try to practice softening it up. And practice doesn't have to just be with men. Practice is with everybody, family, friends, 
you know, whoever, coworkers, that's where you can get your practice in to get comfortable being mindful of the tone and the delivery of your words. So before I get to the next point, I want to give you an opportunity to join my special coaching program. It is go to receivingmyblessings.com. You can click the link below in the comment section or in the description. You're going to learn how to heal, how to tap into your feminine energy, how to meet relationship-minded men, and a plethora of other things. Thousands of women have already joined and have gotten some amazing results. So I want you to experience it. Again, go to receivingmyblessings.com. The, the next unattractive habit that men get turned off by is a woman who's always playing the victim, all right? So essentially never taking any accountability. So going back to that example of man calling you out on, and let me not say calling you out, a man bringing to your attention that you may be speaking harshly or with a bad attitude, right? And that's why I said you have to learn for your initial response not to be to get defensive, but to try to understand it more. And so when, when you don't learn how to take correction, you're going to set yourself up for a lot of tension, a lot of battles, a lot of strained relationships. Now, this isn't just apply, this doesn't, this doesn't just apply to dating and men. In life in general, I think we all, men and women, have to be open to correction. We have to be humble enough to understand that maybe there are things we are overlooking. Maybe there are some areas of growth that we we need to tap into. We all have blind spots here and there, you know, and sometimes it may not be that you have a general overall problem, but it might be in that moment that you've lost, you got caught up in, you know, maybe you're having a bad day something happened to you that morning, you don't realize how that energy is coming off of you. So when someone calls you out, again, I don't want to keep saying calls you out because that sounds very combative. When someone brings it to your attention, again, it's, it's not to say that you have a bigger problem. It's just, hey, in that moment, it needs to be corrected. And we have to be open to that. So essentially, the key to having, one of the keys to having a successful relationship is both parties being willing to hear each other out, take correction, you know, be able to look inward, self-reflect, and work on the problem areas, all right? And so if you find yourself constantly deflecting, getting defensive, we got to work on that because again, that can be a huge turnoff. And as it would be a turnoff for you if you dealt with a man who never took accountability, who's always the victim. That's, it's just, that's not fun to be around. That's not positive. It's not healthy. But it's hitting my spirit that I feel the need to mention this. And I don't want to piss people off. I don't want to hurt feelings. But I have to say it. A lot of, and this doesn't apply to everyone, but a lot of people who are, dwelling in a place of depression. And again, I want to make sure I'm saying, I understand there's some clinical issues and there's some things that there's a bigger problem there. But there's a lot of people who, whether it's dwelling in depression, dwelling in negativity, dwelling in a lower energy place, is because they stay in this victim mindset, okay? And when you're constantly in this victim mentality, you're not going to exude positive energy. Therefore, you're not going to be a desirable person or someone that people desire to be around, okay? Because it can become very draining to others coming around you unless they themselves are in the same mindset as you. So yes, you know, misery loves company. So if we're all just victims and we're all just staying in this negative place, then okay, then it won't bother each other because we can validate each other's feelings in that way. But if that man is in a healthier place, happier place, then you being in that place as a woman is going to throw things off. And so there's nothing wrong with we have our moments, we have our struggles, but we have to look at ways to get ourselves out of that. So I just want to encourage you that, you know, don't just accept 
feeling down. Just don't accept this, this victim mentality. Say, okay, how can I overcome this? What can I do? What can I focus on that will improve my life, my energy, my state of mind? Because a lot of times when we are dwelling in that negative place is because we're focusing on things we can't even control. And that's a pointless thing because that's a battle we're never going to win. If we can't control it, then we need to accept it's out of our hands. Give it to God, move forward. Now let's shift our focus to what can I control that will make my situation better? And sometimes, I feel the need to mention it, it could just be our health. We start inward, all right? Our emotional health, our physical health, our mental health. What can I be feeding my body that's going to help me feel better. Maybe it's getting outside more, getting in the sun, doing, getting some walks in, exercising. There's all these different things. But I don't want to dive too deep into that. Of course, you know, for some of you, if it's, it's, it, if it's a, a huge problem, you know, seek a doctor as well. Seek professional help in that area. That's perfectly fine. But for some, just making those corrections of the things that we can control will completely change how you're feeling. All right, and put you on a much better path. All right, so now we are on to the fifth unattractive habit that men get turned off by, and that is expecting him to read your mind. Nothing, let me not say nothing. There's not many things more frustrating when it comes to relationships for men than a woman who not only expects him to read her mind, but then will hold it against him and be mad at him and punish him for not reading her mind. All right. And so I think one of the things that as a woman, you have to be aware of and understand is that you, you ladies are better wired and more conditioned to paying attention to the small little details. This is not to say there aren't men who aren't just as capable at doing that. But I do think on average, women are much more efficient in that area, okay? Men aren't as detailed in most cases. And so because of that, a woman is paying attention to body language, energy, everything, all right? And and that allows her to look deeper and see more, see, see, see beyond what's being presented at the moment. I think this is one of the reasons why women are so good at finding out when a man is cheating or when a man is lying because she can see through what's being presented a lot of times on top of her intuition possibly tipping her off but there's just a better ability to to again catch those small little details that tell you something's off but men are not that good at that so What happens in a lot of relationships is that due to the woman's ability to do that, she feels like, well, the man should be able to do it for me. Why why hasn't he picked up on X, Y, Z? Why hasn't he noticed this little thing? But And then being mad when he doesn't rather than realizing that's a skill he has to develop. All right. He has to really work on that. And even then, it's, it's going to be harder for him than it would be for you or another woman to work on that skill and to fine tune it. So there has to be a level of grace and understanding that for men, what they prefer is you just being straightforward, specific and clear about what's going on, what you need, what you're thinking, uh, removing the guessing game. Now, listen, when I speak to men, I still encourage them to try to learn to get better in tune with their partner. Try to learn how to better read her and understand her, okay? But if you wanna make your relationships easier, if you want to increase successful dating experience, being more clear and transparent is going to go a long way, all right? So be mindful of getting caught up in that. And again, nothing wrong with desiring that out of a man. But it is a problem when you hold it against him without understanding that that's just now how most men are wired. All right, so number six on this list of unattractive habits that men get turned off by. And I really don't like this one for various reasons, but I'm going to tell you what it is because it's a true thing. And it's how you handle your social media. Okay. So I don't like it. So let me just say, in fairness, I don't, 
I'm a, I'm, I'm a much more free spirited. I'm a little more lax when it comes to certain things, you know, um, I'm not really judge. I'm not a judgy person in general and how you do your social media. I do think there's a line that can be crossed that might make even me be like, okay, wait a minute. That's too much. I'm not dealing with that. Right. But it, other than, other than that, it, it's a far out line, I think, for, for me. However, for a lot of guys, that line is very, it's, it's not too far out. And they are going to pay attention to how you move on social media. Now, for many of you, that may not even be a problem. For many of you, you barely do social media or, you know, you don't post much. But in today's world, men are watching like, does it seem like this woman is trying to get men's attention is she being a little extra with her pictures now here's the thing i think as a woman you still want to post nice pictures on your profiles all right i think that's good i think that can create more opportunities for you but i think we all know what i'm saying when it's talking about maybe going a little far on how you're presenting yourself and that can make a lot of men view you in a negative light now I'm a firm believer that men have men should consider the fact that times have changed and because for at least for maybe a, a woman of a certain age this is what she grew up on and therefore she doesn't see certain things as bad it's more normal it's more common so she may not understand or she really doesn't grasp how this would be a problem right and I do think that for a man like I've I've had situations where I talk to men it, where they were mad at what their girl was posting on social media and was ready to just let her go. And I was like, listen, man, talk to her. She may not have understood it. She may not have realized this would be a problem. If you talk to her and she refuses to make any adjustments, all right, then you guys are just not for each other. You're not in alignment. But if she's willing to make the correction, then don't hold it against her and don't, don't like now create this negative perception of her because of what she posted. And it, in one of the situations that that happened, it all worked out and everything was fine. So I do think that's why I'm not going to, I don't believe in just looking at it and just coming to a judgment on it, but this is what is happening. So it's just something to be mindful of. All right. Be careful with how you're presenting yourself. But again, I want to stress, I do think it's good for uh, for people in general to be mindful of how they are presenting their profile, not in just not doing something that might be considered negative, but just showing yourself in a positive light. Now, I don't want that to sound like following the, the whole habit of presenting what you're not, presenting this fake uh, reality of you like a lot of people are doing on social media. I don't. We don't need to go that far and we don't need to go to the other end of the spectrum. But somewhere nice in the middle <laughs> right? that, you know, have some good pictures of you, maybe some fun things that you're doing on there, some nice things. I think that's good because I think people overlook how social media is another avenue to meet people. All right. So we do need to be mindful because first impressions can be very powerful. And so consider that because I'm sure if you think of yourself as a woman, not if you as a woman think about when you've looked at some men's profiles, it is, it is human nature to come to certain conclusions sometimes based on what's being presented on the page. So something to be mindful of. And last but not least, <laughs> the last unattractive habit that can turn men off is when a woman plays dumb. All right. Now, sometimes a woman can play dumb. And if the man is dumb enough, he's not going to catch it. <laughs> no, no shade to the man, right? But when the man is a lot smarter, a lot sharper, and he sees that you're BSing him, he sees that you're playing this game and, and acting stupid and acting oblivious, that can be a huge turnoff. Huge turnoff. It's like, because now it's like you're, 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 you're uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You're insulting his intelligence. All right. And you're not being authentic and not being authentic is 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 not attractive. It's the same way when a man is not being his authentic self and he's either trying too hard or being something he's not. That's a turn off to you. I can come across very corny. You know what I'm saying? It's just not appealing. So it's the same thing with men. So it's like 
Be, be careful with the whole playing dumb. You know, just be you. I, I think the, the main thing, I, I, I want you to be you. I want you to be your best you. I want you to be mindful that there's certain parts of you that may not really be you. That may sound confusing. I'll give a quick example. Let's go to that speaking harsh and having maybe a rough attitude. Some of you may feel like, well, that's just who I am. That, you know, that's based on what I've been through in life. That's just who I, you know, it is what it is, right? And it's like, no, it's not who you are. It's a defense mechanism. It is there due to unresolved pain, disappointment, and trauma from your life. When you heal, you will see that that wall, that negativity, that attitude goes away. You will find yourself lighter. You will find yourself more positive. And that's what tells you it was never really who you are. So that's an example of getting caught up in this thought of, well, that's just me when it's not. But I want you to be your true self, your true healthy self, and understand that in doing that, you'll be able to receive the man who is truly best for you, who aligns with you, and who will truly love you. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on seven great questions to ask a man in the early stages of dating. Asking him questions or discussing things. Now, there's a caveat to that. And that caveat is you have to express yourself in a very calm, 